the John Deere Thatcherator. This is a pretty cool pull behind tool. Uh, there's not a lot I could find uh, on YouTube about this. Um, there is some about other pull behind spring detachers. Um, for the most part, they're similar. However, if you're looking for specifically the John Deere one, it's pretty hard to find anything on it. Um, there's maybe like one or two videos of someone pulling one around, uh, but it's a short video. It doesn't really go into too much about it. So here I am to, uh, you know, try to explain a little bit about this tool. So let's get to it. So first off, some specs about this tool. It is a 40 inch wide tray. Um, so you have a 40, 40 inch working width on it. Um, the tray itself uh, is capable of holding 100 pounds of extra weight. Um, so you can keep this thing, you know, solid to the ground while you're pulling it around. If you have a rough yard, uh, it might be a good idea to put some extra weight on there. Um, it's made like a lot of these pull behinds are to uh, put a cinder block or a concrete block on there. However, one thing I do is rather than use a block, I have this toolbox that actually fits really well right in here and I can load this up with heavy tools, stuff like that. Uh, it looks a little bit better than just having a cinder block sitting on there. Um, granted, it doesn't really match the whole green and yellow theme, but it works for what I need. There's not a whole lot of extra weight in there, but it does help. This tool itself, I was looking at the instructions, it says it weighs 59 pounds, as you see here. Um, so it does weigh a little bit just by itself, but uh, to really have this thing working right, you do wanna have a little bit of extra weight in there. So I think that's about it really for the, for the dimensions. I mean, the tray's like about, you have about eight inches uh, of width here that you can actually put something down into. And then uh, in between the bolts here, you have about 20, 20 ish inches. Um, so that's about the size you're looking for any kind of weight. I checked it with a John Deere quick attach weight. Uh, you cannot fit a quick, a quick attach weight inside here. Um, and I wouldn't recommend trying to hang one either on the front or the back of this tray. You're not going to get one on the back just because of the frame here. And on the front, you only have an inch, inch and a half maybe or so of uh, material here. So you're not really going to want to go hang a weight right on the front there or it'll probably just fall off. And this is pretty, I mean, thin for hanging a weight on. Um, it is a sturdy build, but I wouldn't go hang a weight on that. But maybe in the future, I'll build a weight bracket for it. We'll see. It's probably not worth it. I'll just stick with the toolbox for now. So, this currently, as it sits, is 40 inches of work width. Um, one thing that you can do is buy these. Part number is LP48003. These are actually sold as uh, de -thatcher, front dethatcher. Uh, extensions for the 300 and 500 series tractors. However, you can also put them on this. Each one's an extra eight inches um, and I think is, I want to say it's four extra tines. So you get a little bit of extra working width with it, basically eight inches per side. So you can go up to 48 or what's next? 50 six inches. So if you're using a 100 series tractor, I would probably stick to just this configuration um, just due to the transmissions in them. If you get up to the 170s and 180s, you can probably go up to one extension. Um, and there are more holes in this frame so that if you were to go with one more extension, I believe you could still get this centered so you're not having an extra hanging off one side but not the other. I think you could still get the tray centered under the frame. Um, and then of course, 300s that have no problem pulling, you know, in a 48 inch configuration. Uh, and then the 500 is what I have. So I'm gonna be going up to the 56 inch configuration and I don't think it's gonna have any issue pulling it whatsoever, but I'll definitely be able to get dethatching done a lot faster. So that's something I'm gonna actually install in a different video but I just wanted to mention it here. 
um, as something you can do that I don't know that too many other brands of dethatchers offer. So if you're looking for a wider than 40 or I think some of them are 42, maybe 46 inch out there. Um, if you're looking for more than that, this is definitely the dethatcher to go with. Uh, what else can we talk about? So the build quality this thing is definitely sturdy, uh, great quality. Um, I don't really know what some of the other thatchers out there uh, are like as far as the quality of the build and the thickness of the metal and whatnot. But uh, this one for me definitely did not disappoint. Um, all the metal seems really thick. You're looking at about 3 16 for the tray, about 5 16 for these L brackets on the side, which hold the frame to the tray. And then the rest of this metal, you're around 9 16 So heavy duty metal here, um, pretty good stuff. Uh, I'm quite impressed with the build quality of this. I mean, it, you know, 59 pounds for something that really doesn't look like it would have a whole lot of mass. Um, it does have, you know, good mass, good, good build. So I am happy at that. Uh, another thing to touch on, the wheels. This was something that you cannot tell in pictures, but the wheels are a solid rubber. These are not uh, uh, like a plastic. They looked cheap in the pictures, and that's one thing that I was kind of concerned about. But uh, upon actually receiving it, it is a metal hub with a solid rubber uh, tire surface. Um, and then it uses a nice uh, thick beefy bolt uh, with just a bushing. Actually, no, it doesn't even have a bushing. It's just a bolt basically that that wheel rides on. Now, these wheels, when you're using this, aren't really moving at all. They're, they should be off the ground. Uh, the only time these wheels are really doing anything is just if you're transporting it from one side of your yard to the other or, you know, what have you. So not having a bearing or not having a plastic bushing uh, isn't really, you know, any, any kind of big deal. So that is that for build quality. Uh, adjustments. So this thing is very adjustable. Um, you can move the tray side to side, kind of like I already went over. Um, you can also tilt it forward and back, um, up and down. And then the wheels, you have different positions you can move the wheels to. All that is necessary when you're getting this set up for your mower. So different mowers have different heights at the pin at the front uh, where you hook it up. Depending on that height, you want to have this thing engaging the ground as level as possible. You don't want your front times digging in real deep and then the back one's barely touching or you're going to have uneven dethatching. You want all the times to work evenly. With that, uh, the handle here has a little spring under it. It's kind of like a spring loaded deal, but basically you just pull that in, if I can do it here, and then when you tilt it down, you have two positions. So you have one position there, which will be, you know, when hooked up to the mower, this will be where it engages the ground. Sitting here, just on a jack stand, it's not. But when I was pulling this with the D105, this is what would just engage the ground in your dethatching mode. They also say that there's a scarifying mode if you want to scarify your yard. In that one, you can go even lower. And that one will definitely bring the wheels up off the ground. Um, I want to say, actually, I know I mentioned earlier that your wheels don't usually do too much um, when you're using the machine. When you're in your just your regular dethatching mode, they will probably be contacting the ground, but there's not going to be a lot of weight on them. In this mode, they're going to be off the ground, and you're going to have all the weight just resting on those tines getting pulled through your yard. So pretty cool stuff there. It is, uh, you know, a little bit versatile. You can do some different things with it. Um, and then you could also use something like this if you have a gravel driveway and uh, maybe you have, you know, where the heavy traffic is, you're starting to get like some little ruts kind of dug into the, you know, loose gravel or whatever. You can always go over the, over the gravel with this and uh, it'll help kind of break up that very, very top layer of loose gravel and just kind of even it out, um, just kind of keep everything looking fresh. So, so that is that on adjustability. Um, I talked about 
talked about my concerns with the wheels. Um, if you are worried about it, just put some grease on there, uh, some WD-40, a Teflon lubricant, really whatever you put on there is going to be just fine. Um, they're easy to take off. It's just a bolt. So, uh, you know, if you ever needed to clean it out, put some new in there. Um, pretty easy to do. If we look at the underside of the Thatcher here, you can see all the times. So they are put on here in groups of two and they are all linked together by this metal uh, wire that's in here. It's just strung through the row and then bent around the ends. And this is here in the event that one of these tines breaks. Um, hopefully it doesn't break, you know, somewhere forward of one of these whole um, coils because if it does then your tine's going to be just laying in the yard. The whole idea is that if these break you don't have a tine laying in the yard um, for your mower to hit. It'll just retain it on there and then you'll see when you're done that oh hey I have a broke tine. So then you can get these replaced. Uh, I looked I couldn't find a part number in the owner's manual uh, for these tines to replace them or I'd post it. Um, I would like to know myself so I might have to do some digging. I'm sure you could call your dealer, um, you know, if you get this at a dealer or if you just have a dealer near you. Um, I'm sure they would be able to get more of these times. So, pretty cool there. They're easily removable. It's just a, uh, a nut, a bolt, and a washer, so nothing crazy there. Um, and I am gonna try to mimic this when I do that uh, extension. I think I'm gonna try to tie those together. I think an old coat hanger will work perfectly. So that's it for uh, for the tines. So one thing that you see in a lot of reviews about these tools is that they're not worth the money. So I'm here to say that using this multiple times last year and uh, even using it on a friend's yard uh, last year, this thing definitely does what it's intended to do. So if you have, you know, a lot of packed down dead matter in your yard, uh, you can kind of just look between the grass if you see, you know, dried out looking grass between it. That's what this is made to dig up. Uh, additionally, if you have moss on the yard or anything like that, it will dig it up. So I took a stab at it, um, bought it, and it worked great. Um, I'll show a picture here of the D105 pulling it and what it made the yard look like. Now keep in mind, before running this dethatcher, that yard was just nice and green. Not the best green that it was throughout the season, but greener than what it is in the picture. So take a look. So it does really well. It dug up a lot of dead matter and it blew my mind how much stuff came out of my yard and how much was actually still left. You would think doing something like this would be really damaging to the yard, but I was actually surprised it wasn't. It got so much stuff out and it just, the yard started growing like a weed afterward. Uh, I was extremely impressed and, you know, I would recommend this to anyone now. Um, or any of the dethatchers out there for that matter. Um, however, I can say this one definitely did what it was supposed to do. Um, there were some spots in my yard that had a little bit of moss growing. Um, it ripped that stuff up, broke it up. Um, so, you know, leaving way then, you know, you can put grass seed down or even grass that's already there can grow into that area. So, did a really great job. I can't say enough good things about this. It was definitely worth the buy. Unfortunately, you only get to use it once or twice a year, maybe, um, unless you have some friends that either want to do their yard or, you know, you're into letting people borrow your stuff. I don't know how much I like doing that, but it is an option. So I think that's it for this one. Uh, stay tuned for my other video about this. I will be installing the extensions. Um, and then also keep an eye out. I'll uh, get some video this season of this thing actually getting used and uh, what it actually does. So obviously since I dethatched last season, I don't know that it's gonna pull up quite as much this year, but uh, being in Alaska where the grass dies hardcore every year and then comes back, 
uh, I'm willing to bet there's probably still going to be plenty of dead matter to uh, pull back up. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know and I'll be happy to answer. Have a good one.